Can I be excused? I want to watch something on TV. Me too. Not yet. First, I got a new little game we're going to play. This isn't whoever clears the table the fastest wins a quarter, is it? Last time we played, it took me two weeks to get all the broccoli from under the refrigerator. This is a game for improving your mind. I call it Stuff That Brain. Yeah, but, Dad, there's all sorts of good things on the tube tonight. I know that it's just that the things that you like to watch aren't one of them. Like Dr. Ruth. <laughs> exactly. OK, here's the way the game goes. We're going to pick any subject in the encyclopedia and then read what it says out loud. And you thought this wasn't going to be fun. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Now, how do we do it? OK, there are 23 volumes in a set of encyclopedias. So, Lauren, I want you to pick any number from 1 to 23. Six. He said me first. I wanted six. I'm supposed to pick a number. Why don't we pick a number to see who picks a number? Hold it. <laughs> Hold it. I'll pick a number and I'll get the book. If I'm not back in five minutes, it's because I've moved to another city. <laughs> she won't move. She can't live without me. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. Volume five. OK. Now, I'll pick a page number. Yeah, I want to pick one. Junior, I said I'll pick. That means I will pick. <laughs> Your father, the top dog. <laughs> Pit Hucho, his royal highness, and master of all that he surveys. <laughs> we'll pick. Right, Your Majesty. 32. 32, you got it. You want me to pick the first entry on the page? That's right. And pay attention, everybody, because we're going to learn something from this. We'll probably be doing this every night for the rest of your lives. Like... Embalming. <laughs> Preserving the body after death by injecting fluids into the veins. Look, uh, on, on second thought, why don't we just go see what's on television? No, yeah. in the park, kids in the car, Sunday's family day, get away, with family, togetherness, and it's so good to know that we still count on us, oh, 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 oh. we're family, we're made up of the lasting kind, so hard to find, we've got us, when the I've got my man. I hope it's not just a silly infatuation. <laughs> what attracted you? His aftershave? What? The funny little way he wrinkled his nose? This is serious. I have discovered that someone from street maintenance has been putting too much asphalt in the potholes. So now we got pot hills. <laughs> what tripped him up? Tar breath? In the process of elimination. See, I knew it couldn't be the smoother or the raker, so that left only one person, the butler. <laughs> I'm turning him into Mr. Simpson. But nobody likes a stool pigeon. Well, nobody likes me anyway. He knows. Who told him? That's the first smart thing I've ever heard him say. <laughs> All right, guys, come on. Let's lay off for Sandler. I mean, he means well. Yeah, you really think so? No. <laughs> Highways, Richmond. Oh, hi, Ellen. Your father? Yeah, he's here. He's never busy. Hold on, I'll get him for you. It's your daughter. Thanks. Hi, honey, I thought you were at school. When'd this happen? Oh, okay, well, uh, can Barbara's mother take you home? All right, I'll talk to you at dinner. You okay? All right, bye-bye. Is everything all right? Oh, they sent the kids home from school early. What happened? No big deal. A couple of young punks ransacked Mrs. Baxter's classroom. 
Mrs. Baxter's classroom was right next door to Diana's. Nobody was hurt. They broke some windows, tore up a few desks, painted some dirty words on the principal. <laughs> I wonder why Diana didn't call me. She probably didn't want to worry. I better call home and make sure she's all right. Charlie, are you aware of the fact that you've assigned McGreedy and Guthrie to the same crew? Yeah, at the corner, Halstead and Madison. Charlie, they can't be together. Uh, excuse me, boss, but those two streets have been together since they built Chicago. <laughs> Milton, I'm not talking about Halstead and Madison. Well, Halstead and Jefferson can't be together. They run parallel to each other. I know that. I suppose we could build an overpass for Madison, then they wouldn't be together. <laughs> Milton, please, not now. Okay? Good idea. We can start construction in the spring when the weather gets better. It's a good point. Thanks, boss. Well, Charlie? Mr. Simpson, I know I scheduled McGreedy and Guthrie together, and I know they don't get along. Don't get along. The last time they worked together, they had a fight that ran all the way from uh, State Street to the lake. I remember that. It lasted 45 minutes. That's right. They must have made all the lights. There's nothing to worry about, sir. I had a long talk with both of them, and they promised me that they'd behave. And you bought that? I wouldn't have bought that. You bought that shirt. <laughs> My mother got it for me. What'd she do, roll a clown? <laughs> Charlie, I am predicting a major Megillah at the corner of Halstead and Madison. And if that happens, guess who's going to have to go down there and take care of it? Hey, boss, can we all guess I love these? <laughs> sure, baby. Yeah, yeah. His first name is Charlie, and his last name is Richmond. All right, they're all going to guess it now. <laughs> Mr. Simpson, Mr. Simpson, here is the name of the person who put too much asphalt on the potholes. Joe Baker? <laughs> Saddle up, boys. There's going to be a hanging. <laughs> Get a rope. Right. Round up every man and boy who can carry a gun. Now be careful because the man's a desperado. Uh, I'll get the sheriff. I ain't going to be in on no hanging. Okay, okay. I hope you guys are having a good time making fun of me. I know I am. How about you guys? I am. Did you call Diana yet, Charlie? And Eli was busy. I'll have to wait and call again after my daughter leaves home for college. <laughs> Beautiful, so what's the problem? Mom, those pictures are going into the yearbook. The whole school will see them. So? So, they're of me and they're ugly. You did know they were of me, didn't you? <laughs> of course, and they're anything but ugly. Anything? How about moronic, stupid, weird, freaky? <laughs> Come on, it's only $23 for new pictures. Only? Mom. Lauren, I don't see what's wrong with these. Look at the nose. There's a bump on it. I don't have... Mom, I don't have a bump on my nose, do I? Shed it, Robert. <laughs> Lauren, if you look close enough at anybody, you're bound to find something wrong. Then I do have a bump on my nose. <laughs> I didn't say that. Look, let me show you something. Come here, look at this. Here's a picture of me when I was in high school. Big deal. So you were beautiful. Lauren, you got a long way to go. <laughs> Robert. OK, she's beautiful. <laughs> Do you know that I wanted to burn this just because of one little thing that nobody even noticed? One tiny little flaw. Here, let me see. Oh, yeah, one eye's kind of crossed like you're looking at your nose. <laughs> No. It's the two front teeth. There's something that's stuck between them. <laughs> okay, let me see. Let me see. Oh, I see it now. There are two little zits. Right there are one little zits. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Hi, honey. How you doing there, handsome? Hi, Dad. <coughs> Hi, beautiful. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Hi, ugly. <laughs> see, and he likes me. 
What's this all about? Lauren has a problem. So do I. Jim just told me about that little incident in Miss Baxter's classroom. Oh, just a few young troublemakers letting off a little steam. They threw a little paint around. Jim said it was more than just a little paint. Whatever. Nobody was hurt. Well, somebody could have been. Like you, maybe. I wasn't even in my classroom when it happened. Look, can we talk about this later? Lauren doesn't like her yearbook pictures, and she wants new ones taken. Why, just because that little bump on her nose? <laughs> Go, sport. You just cost yourself 23 bucks. Thanks, Dad. Mom, Dad, I, I have a problem. So do I, Junior. And I assure you, mine is more important than yours. Yeah, but mine's about a girl. It's always about a girl. <laughs> yeah, but I got a girl in trouble. <laughs> Sit down and tell us about it, quick. All right, well, there's this girl at school, Cindy, a solid nine. Actually, a ten if she's walking away from you. Would you get on with it? Well, she gave me this beautiful, very expensive sweater. Come on, get to the trouble part. Well, it belongs to her father. Dad, I have to get the sweater back before her father gets home and she gets grounded. So what do you want from me? I really need to use the car. Really? <laughs> Look, if you want to impress her father, don't let him see you getting out of a raggedy old car. Let him see you stepping off of a shiny new bus. <laughs> okay. Bye, Dad. You know, I just love the way you handled Junior's problem. Short and sweet, just like you. <laughs> I was in the faculty lounge, and I heard this commotion down the hall, and then I saw them. There were three of them, three big, tough-looking kids. Was anybody hurt? I don't believe so, although Mrs. Baxter, it was her room, was pretty shaken up, and there was a lot of paint on her dress. I see they're sending the students home for the day. Yes, and they should. It was a rather upsetting thing to happen, and there was a lot of damage. Did the police have any leads? I don't know, but I hope these people are apprehended. These things are happening much too often. Thank you, Mrs. Diana Richmond, here at McCormick High School, where vandals went on a ramp. Mom, you look so cute. Were you scared? A few teenagers letting off steam, huh? Mom, be careful out there. <laughs> What's that for? You going to sleep? Just to show you how much I care about you. Oh, you're something else. Where did I find you? You didn't find me. I found you. Are you going to keep me? You better believe it. I have to now, because the warranty's expired. What went first, the five years or the 50,000 miles? Well, actually, everything's working so well, I never noticed. Oh. Care to take her for a spin? You devil, you. <laughs> You know, you could move your school a little further east. And you could move that arm just a little further west. My pleasure. You know, Hamlin High isn't too far from where you are now. I think you're missing the point. And that's not all you're missing. <laughs> uh, could we talk about this first thing in the morning? First thing in the morning, we're going down to the school board and arrange your transfer. Over my dead body. And speaking of dead bodies, that's what you got a hold of right now. <laughs> Why take a chance on getting hurt when all you have to do is move to a safer school? McCormick is where I belong. That's my school, and those are my kids. Hey, well, these are your kids, too. Please, don't start that again. Why don't you just add a little danger to Junior's life? Why don't you tell him to walk to school along the expressway? No, no. I'll tell him not to go to school or hide in the closet all day. He's going to school, all right. But maybe the first thing we should do is soak him with gasoline and then make him smoke. Now, why don't we hire a limousine and send him to one of those fancy schools in the suburbs? I'm not hiring any limousine. Why don't you buy him a motorcycle and I'll get him a cardboard crash helmet? <laughs> 
just push him off the roof. <laughs> Did you ever get the feeling that you weren't here? It's starting to sound like you and me. See you later, Dad. Come on. Yeah, I'm leaving too. Love you, Dad. Love you too. Come on, little bro. You sure it's safe out there? Safer than it is in here. <laughs> it's okay, honey. It's okay. So what's wrong with moving to a safer school? We have a problem getting good teachers at McCormick once they see some of the conditions. Yeah, like getting beat up. <laughs> that doesn't happen often. Yeah, just like my uncle said when he tried to wash the cat, once is enough. <laughs> you know, there's one answer. Teach kids to be decent citizens. I'll buy that. Thank you. But just do it at a different school. <laughs> and what are you going to do if I don't? Stop speaking to me? No. Leave me? Have me put away, lock me in a closet, shave my head? What, Charlie? I'll get back to you. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie. It's not a good morning for you, Charlie. You've got a big problem. Charlie, Mr. Simpson would like to have a word with you. I'll be very happy to let him know you're here. Try not to drool on your shirts. It's not, not good. <laughs> you hear? Yes, sir. Charlie, good to see you. I, uh, I got a little surprise for you. Don't move. Stay right there. I want to remember you uh, just as you are. <laughs> Come here. Say hello to Charlie. McCready. Hi, Charlie. What happened to your head? The Guthrie. I'm going to kill him. Where is he? I'll break his face. Guthrie. I'll tear him to hell. That's not somebody you already did. You take me. <laughs> Grab him again. you got to be kidding me. Hey, hey, hold him. Done me, brain. You shoved it to me, you fathead. I'm sorry. It was all his fault. Are you okay, Charlie? Yeah, I'll be okay. Look, look, you guys. Why don't we sit down and discuss this thing, okay? Oh, that's a good idea. These long talks always work. You <laughs> hold, 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 hold. What happened? What happened? Well, we was out there at Halstead and Madison, working a cherry picker, fixing a sign on an overpass. I was driving. This moron couldn't pass the written. Well, why'd you hit him in the head? Bad eyes. I was aiming for his teeth. Hey, 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 knock, knock it off, guys. Guys. <laughs> Look, hold it, guys. I'm not gonna end up on a cherry picker out there at Madison Austin just because you guys act like a couple of maniacs. You got that, McCready? You got that, country? Okay. You guys get back out there and get to work. Knock it off. <laughs> Amazing. <coughs> Unbelievable. That's astounding, Charlie. That's astounding, Charlie. <laughs> that was absolutely wonderful. It's a piece of cake. <laughs> on the cherry pick out a hole for the mess. <laughs> what in the world are you doing in there? I'm gonna wear this when I clean up Junior's room. Only when I walk. Well, what happened? Oh, I went and worked with a road crew today. Like old times, huh? Yeah, I got me a little sunshine, a little fresh air, a little carbon monoxide, a little sewer gas. I'm sure glad they still make you wear these things. Well, it's either wear these or wear home defender of a 67 caddy. You mean 
people still don't slow down when they see those orange rubber cones? Are you kidding? They race in and out of those things like it's a giant slalom out there. <laughs> I'm glad you're not doing that anymore. I saw a guy go by yesterday with three little hard hats painted on the side of the car. <laughs> if I had known that, I would have told you to quit. Quit? My job? You don't quit a job just because it's a little bit dangerous. Uh, I'm a man. <laughs> it's different. It's different. Yeah, you could punch one of those cars right in the headlights. <laughs> You think I painted myself in the corner here, don't you? Yes. <coughs> well, you're right. <laughs> Just that in the past, when, when one of us wanted something, the other one always knew and gave in. Like when I wanted the pajamas with the feet in them? I still hate those things. <laughs> yeah, but I'd burn them if I could stay at McCormick High. You really want that job a lot, don't you? Yes. You know, the number one reason why people go bad, they get started wrong. Parents and teachers can do something about that. I'm a parent and a teacher. You can't ask me to walk away from that responsibility. OK, on one condition. What? To wear this. <laughs> yeah. Mom, a hard hat? Ooh, this argument is heating up. <laughs> hey, Lauren, Robert, come here quick. The fight's about to start. We're going to fight. We're certainly not. Your father finally understands that I'm a liberated, free-thinking woman of the 80s, and any decisions to be made about my life will be made by me and me alone. I'm not buying that. <laughs> you bought that shirt, didn't you? <laughs> Do you think it's all right if we argue in front of the kids? Why not? They argue in front of us. Yeah, but you tell them to shut up. Can they say the same thing to us? They can try it, but they won't sit down for five years. I just want to make sure we set a good example for them. OK. From now on, you just agree with everything I say. You got it. Just make sure you never say anything that I don't agree with. OK, look, let's just argue in front of the kids. I'll go wake them up. Don't you do it. Are you cold? I'm freezing. I'll close the window. It's already closed. You turn up the heat? That won't do it. Why don't I stay here and turn up the heat? <laughs> now you're talking. Hey, I got a great idea. What's that? Let's make a fire in the fireplace. I forgot the wood. Won't need it. We can burn these. <laughs> then it's a great idea. Mom, I'm not tired. Can we stay up and play a game or something? Let's play hide and seek. <laughs> you go hide, and I'll count to 100. OK. Don't count too fast. I won't. <laughs> One, 